Hello and welcome to a special screencast on the text editor used in the Ruby on Rails tutorial screencasts, Sublime Text 2. My name is Michael Hartle, author of the Ruby on Rails tutorial book and host of the Ruby on Rails tutorial screencast series. Sublime Text 2, which I usually just call Sublime Text or even just Sublime, is an outstanding text editor that's, among other things, compatible with a lot of uh, the TextMate shortcuts and snippets out there that are used by a lot of uh, Ruby on Rails developers on Macintosh OS X. But unlike TextMate, it is available cross-platform, so Windows and Linux users can also use it. And it is both newbie-friendly and a full-strength text editor. In this screencast, I'm going to be talking about some of the keyboard shortcuts that are most important for doing software development, especially focusing on Ruby on Rails, and also mention some extensions that are used in the Rails tutorial. We have here a Sublime Text 2 window. Right now it's stretched all the way across the screen, and I'm going to start by opening up uh, one of the files from the Rails tutorial. You might notice at the bottom right of the screen that the command P appeared. And if you look at the top of the screen, you can see that GoTo is flashing. So if you click on that, you can see that what we're doing is using GoTo anything. This is a really useful command. It lets you find files just by typing uh, some of the letters that appear in them. So let's open up the user model. You can see at the bottom right here, we've got Ruby on Rails syntax highlighting right there. On the far right, you might notice that there's a, what's called a mini-map. It's actually a map of the code in this file. This is especially useful on longer files. Let's take a look at one of those. That was uh, command T, if you were paying close attention. A command T is, as far as I can tell, identical to command P. And I think the reason that Sublime Text supports command T is because that's the find anything command in TextMate. And you can see that I typed UPS for user pages spec. This uh, go to anything is really smart at uh, finding files. So uh, typing UPS found this user pages spec based on the letters that are in the file name. I'll hit return. So you can see here that this lets you navigate a longer file. Now in the Ruby on Rails tutorial, I do a lot of test-driven development and for that purpose, I like using two panes, which means that the, the mini-map actually isn't very useful because it, it's a little bit too wide. Um, in order to get more screen real estate, um, I usually get rid of the, the, uh, the mini-map, so I'm going to hide it. And while it's useful to uh, see this sidebar, if, if you're uh, just learning about the directory structure, say, of a Rails application, uh, I find that I almost always navigate with the go-to-anything. And I want this screen real estate for, uh, for other purposes, for, for two panes in particular. And so I'm going to hide that sidebar. Now you can see here it says com uh, Command K, Command B. This is really useful to be able to pick up keyboard shortcuts from the menus here. So let's do that. I'm going to shut this down with Command W. And let's open up a second pane. I'm going to move this over. The convention I use is to have application code on the right and test code on the left. So Let's open that up. Here's the user spec. One thing that's useful to be able to do when you've got two panes is go back and forth between the two of them uh, just using the keyboard. And uh, to that end, you can use a Control 2 to get to the second pane, Control 1 to get back to the first. Now I'm going to run the tests in this file with, as you can see, Shift Command T. You can see that they're all passing. That doesn't come with Sublime Text by default. You can read about how to do that at uh, this URL, it's github.com slash mhartle slash rails tutorial sublime text. This has some instructions about how to set up sublime text in the same way that um, I have mine set up for the rails tutorial screencasts. In particular, uh, there's this, this awesome package called Ruby test. You click on it here. And this lets you run your test from within sublime text. So let me, uh, let me show you how that works. Here we are in the test file, and as you saw before, I can do Shift Command T to run the tests in that file. I can also do Shift Command R to run just this this one test. Um, if I want to run multiple tests in, in a describe block, let's see if I can scroll down. Here, here there are uh, several tests. In here, I can do Shift Command R here to run the three examples that are inside this block. So that's this here one, 
two, three. So that's the, a test of the authenticate method. That's implemented by uh, has secure password, which is uh, a method that comes uh, by default in Rails starting in Rails 3.1. So let's go over to the second pane and just go up to where we have has secure password. And now I'm going to comment out has secure password. This is with uh, command slash, as you can see. And now I'm going to save this file and rerun the tests. And this is really useful. Shift Command E will rerun the tests. And you can see that the, those three tests that I ran are now all failing because the uh, authenticate method doesn't exist uh, as a result of commenting out has secure password. So I can either undo this or I can redo it and show that we can toggle here with command slash. Save it and rerun the tests. There we go. Now at the bottom of this file, you might notice that uh, inside of this, uh, this private keyword area, there's uh, a method that's actually indented one level more than uh, the rest of the methods. Uh, this is a really useful convention because if you, if you do this, if you just have it at the same level of indentation as the other methods, it's actually quite easy in a longer file to uh, accidentally add another method. And so you can be down here and just imagine there were a bunch of methods in, in between here. And then you, you, you put this in. And then you say, OK, let's run our tests. Well, wait a minute. Why is that failing? That doesn't make any sense. It should be passing. And then you realize that it's because it's actually um, inside of this, this uh, the, the private met the method area. So there's this useful technique of indenting the private methods an extra level. So let's do that. So that's where that's where this comes from. So indentation, you can do command uh, angle, uh, command square brackets to indent back and forth. You can also squish it all the way to the uh, to the left. You can see now that we've lost the indentation there. So so this uh, this convention is really useful. I, I used to think it looked stupid, and then I got bitten by this problem several times and said, okay, maybe those other people weren't so stupid after all. So let's run our test again, see that we're passing. Good. So you saw a bunch of useful commands there. Now there's one more that I want to highlight here. I, I really like uh, this command. Command L just uh, highlights the line. And it's, this is particularly useful if you just want to delete a line. Control K will also kill the line. And there may be a way to delete and remove the line at the same time. I'm not sure, but Command L uh, delete works pretty well for me. One of the things about using keyboard shortcuts is you'll find that uh, you can easily get lost in micro-optimization. Uh, I think there's a big win in learning some keyboard shortcuts, but don't obsess about getting every last little detail right. All right, I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to, this is a, the escape key. This actually doesn't get displayed um, by Keycaster, but that gets rid of the little test area. And I'm going to close these down with Command W. And now let's run the full test suite see where we are. Aha, there are some failing tests. Where are those failing tests? As you might imagine, this is, uh, this is by design. So there's a problem on the user pages spec. Let's open that up. You can see I kind of go back and forth between Command P and Command T depending on what my fingers want to do as far as that. Yeah, so I, I hew to the, the 80 column rule. This is at column 81. We can actually move this over just a little bit to make make it so that we can see it. There actually isn't quite enough screen real estate just to have 80 columns in both panes. But this is good enough, especially, yeah, this file. Let's see. That's probably a pretty good balance. Let's run these tests again inside of the, the editor. You can see that it's, uh, the first error is at line 28, so let's go there. So it looks like there's a problem with listing the users. And that happens in the user index. Let's take a look at the application. 
And if you haven't been following the Rails tutorial, this might seem uh, a little mysterious. So let's just sign in here. So it was the the problem was with the listing of the users. So that's on the users page. Ah, and indeed, look at that. There should be a bunch of users here, but in fact, uh, there are just these two sets of pagination links. So let's take a look at that. That's on the users index. Here we go. And look at that. We are indeed missing some code here. So I'm going to use my my knowledge of the tutorial to fill this in. Uh, what we want here is an unordered list. So in Sublime Text, you can do UL, and then with a the tab trigger, um, you can create the, the UL. Um, this isn't always that convenient, though. I found that, um, in particular, if you if you do tab again, it goes to the end. And so I actually just like to type UL, especially when I'm going to give it a class, which, I, which I'm going to right now. A and then I'll use a, a keyboard shortcut to to close off the tag at the end. Um, so at this point, though, I'm going to render a, a variable. Let's, let's take a look at it. It should be in here. Um, there, the index has a, an at users variable. So I'm going to render that. I'm going to be using some embedded Ruby here. And there's a keyboard shortcut that comes as part of, uh, of this. Let's take a look at it. This is the real tutorial Sublime Text setup. And there's a, something called a Sublime ERB. It's really useful for making embedded Ruby inside of Sublime Text. So uh, let's take a look at how that works. It's Control Shift period, and it actually will just loop through things. If you want to look at the different kinds of ERB, it'll just cycle through them. But this is the one we want because we want to render the users. And then this is a nice little one. Um, we want to go on to the next line. But we can't just hit return, because if we hit return, it'll do this. Uh, there's a nice way to uh, get a, a new line while uh, not carrying the rest of the line with us, and that's command return. I'm going to go back here, and then there's a command to close off the tag, which is option command period. Save that and rerun our test and see if that fixed things. And it did. Let's take a look just as a sanity check in the browser. And there we go. There are just a couple more things I want to mention. One is, is that uh, there are a bunch of nice shortcuts for uh, creating code called tab triggers. So for example, if you want to add a new describe block inside of RSpec, you can do DES tab and then type your description. And then you can also type it tab and then put in your expectation. It should be foo. And then you would say. You can also do a before block, BEF tab. And then you can do things like sign in. Both it blocks and before blocks sometimes appear as, as one-liners. You can see a bunch of one-line blocks here. And I've defined some snippets of my own that you can get if you go to, to this, if you go to the, uh, the Rails Tutorial Sublime Text. Um, there are some snippets that are defined here, including a single line before block, which is just B tab. And then you can do this. Let's do this here. I tab, it should be foo. There's a similar tab trigger for defining a new method. So if you wanted to define a new method here, you could do def tab, and then, then the name of the method. And what I did there at the end was just to hit tab again, and it gets you to this spot. Um, defining your own snippets is fairly easy, and if you've watched this far, I'm confident that you have the ability now to go to your favorite search engine and type Sublime Text 2 snippets, or something to that effect. But it's really quite simple, and uh, one of the cool things about Sublime Text, as I mentioned briefly at the beginning, is that it supports a lot of the same snippets as TextMate, which means that if you've defined some snippets already 
uh, for your, your TextMate setup, you can just copy them over um, and use them in Sublime Text. I'm not going to go into detail on that because it's covered in the advanced setup screencast for the Rails tutorial and it's covered on, on this page uh, at the Rails tutorial Sublime Text. Okay, two more things and then we're done. Uh, one is uh, that uh, Sublime Text supports various kinds of autocomplete. I, I use this uh, uh, alternative autocompletion that's linked to here in the little setup file. And what autocomplete does is that it lets you hit escape and it completes the word uh, based on surrounding context. So for example, if you wanted to use current user in this spot, you could just type cur escape and it uh, auto completes current user based on the existence of current user elsewhere in the file. So we can do this. You can see that current user appears elsewhere in the file, in particular right here. So this is very useful, especially if you have uh, long method names or long variable names. You can just type a, a couple of letters, um, get it to the point where it's probably unique or close to it, and then you can just hit escape. And it will cycle through the different possibilities as well. So let's do this. You can see it cycles through things. So that's really useful. The last thing I want to note is that this syntax highlighting might look familiar. This is exactly the same syntax highlighting used in the first edition of the Rails tutorial screencasts, and it's, it's also the same syntax highlighting used in Ryan Bates's Railscasts. And uh, that last part is uh, especially not coincidental because, in fact, uh, these colors and th uh, these uh, patterns were made by Ryan for the Railscasts. So he uses them um, in his own programming and in the Railscasts. And he's very generous about uh, making his code available. So I just went to the Railscast page where he talks about his setup. And uh, I use it in TextMate. And then I discovered that Sublime Text supports the same kinds of syntax highlighting files. As described here, you can use this Railscast theme in Sublime Text. So I found this uh, really reassuring when I first started using Sublime Text. I was immediately oriented. I, I felt at home uh, because these colors were so familiar. There's lots more to learn about Sublime Text. It's, uh, as I mentioned, a fully featured text editor. It has all kinds of great things. But uh, these are the most commonly used techniques in my programming and uh, in the Rails tutorial screencasts. So I hope you found this useful. And if you'd like to learn more about Ruby and Rails, I recommend checking out the Rails tutorial.